that could cause actual results to differ materially in future. Given these uncertainties and other factors, participants on today's call may observe due caution by interpreting the results. The full disclaimer is available on slide 43 of 23 FY24 investor day. Participants are requested to note the same. And I request our MD, Mr. Rajesh Sharma, to present the opening. Thank you, Mr. Good afternoon, friends. Let me start by wishing you all a happy new year 2024. We declared our renewed consolidated results for Q3 FY24 on Saturday, 27 January 2024. I hope you had a chance to go through the investors' desk. We have a lot of updates to share on today's call, so my opening commentary today is going to be slightly longer than usual. I would like to start by highlighting a few key decisions that our board approved this latest meeting. CGCL's board has approved a stock split from rupees two face value currently to rupees face one face value. The CGCL stock had last split in November 2016 from rupees ten to rupees two face value then. The board has also approved a bonus issuance in the range of one is to one. The company's para equity share capital shall increase from rupees 412.5 million in Q3 FY24 to rupees 824.9 million after the split and the bonus issue. The outstanding equity share shall quadruple from the 206.23 million shares to 824.9 million shares. These measures shall add in improving our liquidity. Both split and bonus issuance are subject to shareholder approval. We have already published the notice for an extraordinary general meeting of our shareholders to be held on 22nd Feb 2024 to seek approval for stock split bonus issue. We have also appointed three distinguished leaders from the field of finance, technology, and ESG as independent director on our board. They are Mr. L. V. Prabhakar, a career banker and former MD and CEO of Kendra Bank. Mr. Shishi Priyadeshi, former IS officer and a director uh, on the uh, World Trade Organization, having a distinguished public servant and a wide-ranging experience across all disciplines. And Ms. Nipur Mukherjee, former global managing director at Standard Chartered and also at Barclays Bank with deep experience in critical technology, data science practices, and ESG. The detailed profiles are available in the leadership section of our website. Please do refer to those. These appointments have added significant strength to CAFE's board and the executive management will immensely benefit from its guidance. I would like also to inform that our newly incorporated wholly owned subsidiary CAFE Loans Car Platform Private Limited became operational during Q3 FI24 and has begun accruing income. In due course, the car loan origination and that business shall be conducted out of the subsidiary. As intimated earlier, we have received a composite uh, license from insurance regulator IRDI to distribute life, non life, and health insurance policies. Our insurance distribution team is already in place and we expect to generate a gross insurance fee income of at least rupees 1 billion between FY 2027. This will contribute significantly in strengthening our ROE structure and support our target of crossing 15% ROE uh, by before FY 27. I shall now turn the commentary on business and earning performance for 9 months FY24. Construction finance EM grew by 35% year on year to rupees 227 crore, driven by growth in disbursement by 33% year on year to rupees 1347 crore for 9 months FY24. MSME loan EM grew by 24% year on year to rupees 27668 crore rupees. On the back of a strong business momentum during 9 months FI24, the company is targeting to cloak in FI24 AUM growth of about in the range of 50% year-on-year basis to rupees 15,000 crore rupees. The strong momentum in AUM growth along with the strong thrust in fee income uh, drove 59% year-on-year growth in the uh, total net income. Supported by focus collection effort uh, and active monitoring of the book uh, gross stage 3 asset has fall, shown a decline of 20 basis in a year on basis to 2.1% uh, in, uh, in, in third quarter FY24 versus 2.3% three quarter FY23.
Our core loan distribution business is on course to originate rupees 10,000 crore business in FI24. On behalf of eight commercial bank partners during nine months of FI24, the company originated car loan to the tune of rupees 7,073 crore, which is up by 83 percent year-on-year basis. Net fee generated by rupees 81 crore in nine-month period for FI24. The company is confident of crossing its set target of 10,000 crore, that is growth of 75 percent year-on-year by FI24. To further scale up the car loan origination business in FY25, CGCL is planning to build a tech platform and transfer the entire business to a newly created wholly owned subsidiary. Uh, we also have a plan to build an insurance platform, as I told earlier. CGCL has an active client base of 300,000 customers as of December 2023, of which about 137,000 customers were added in nine months FY24. With a strong momentum in the retail lending business, the company aims to take an active client base to 400,000 by the end of FY24 and 800,000 by the end of FY27. Physicians rapidly increasing client relationship offers a sizable captive base to cross-sell and improve insurance penetration. This will help Physicians strengthen its insurance cross-sell income and deliver about 100 crore fee income, uh, which will uh, generate about ROE about 2% in the span of the next three years. If you talk about our cost to income ratio, which is declined 392 basis quarter on quarter and 6650 basis year on year to 63%. In absolute terms, the operating expenses were unchanged quarter on quarter to rupees. Uh, 2,203 million. The flattening of OPEX in Q3 FI24 is in sharp contrast to the steep increase we have reported since the launch of our gold loan business in Q2 FI23. The flattening is also on account of the pause we have taken in the, our branch expansion since it is completed. It's a plan. As a result, the reversal and decline in cost income ratio shall continue with the gold loan business selected to break even in Q4 FI24. Owing to a strong net income performance as well as the flat operating expenses, our pre-provisioning operating profit touched to rupees 1,296 million, increasing by a robust 19% quarter on quarter and 78% year on year. This also allowed us to not just comfortably absorb incremental initial provisioning requirement on account of higher NP, but also improve the provisioning coverage ratio. Now I come to the credit cost and asset quality. Our GNPA ratio increased by 80 bits quarter and quarter to 2.10, although it remained 22 bits lower on a year on a basis. In absolute terms, the gross NPA pool increased by rupees 361 million quarter and quarter. MSME contributed by rupees 148 million to the increase, while CF and housing contributed rupees 106 million each. Some of the increase in MSME and housing NP was a result of the flow from restructured assets, which are now fully out of out of moratorium since Q2 FI24. The standard restructured assets stood at 92 basis of on book AUM compared to 113 bits to Q2 FI24 and 176 bits in Q2 FI23. Our legal and collection teams expect to resolve a chunky of legacy NP and MSM in housing during Q4 FI24 with a minimal haircut on the net outstanding. In construction finance, we expect to resolve nearly 25 million of Q3 FY24 slippage during Q4 FY24 and the remaining to be 81 million in the next financial year. Of the rupees 160 million slippage from the construction finance during Q1 FY24, we are happy to share that the stress project has been approved, funding from the stress asset fund of the government of India, Swamin Fund, and the same is also likely to be resolved during FY24 with the likelihood of a full recovery. Our credit cost for Q3 FI24 is to rupees 403 million on or 1.25% annualized as per the uh, age per percent of average AUM. The increased credit cost was both as a result of higher NTA flow as well as for the improving the provision coverage ratio. You may recall our guidance during Q2 FI24 conference call wherein we had indicated our target of gradually improving the PCR and stabilizing it around 37-40% level. Our PCR improved. 243 basis in Q3 FY24 to 34.7%. Despite our focus on improvement on the PCR, which will continue in Q4 FY24, however, our full year credit cost in FY24 will 
will remain in the range of uh, 1% which has been our long term average credit cost we have reported a net profit of rupees 680 million which is higher 82% year on year and 4% quarter on quarter excluding the loss incurred in the gold loan business our net profit would have been 803 million we have reported 2% ro in 7.3% ro in q3 fy24 our earning performance during q3 fy24 can be termed as being resilient our efforts at diversifying our business and income stream over past two three years are now beginning to support us meaningfully as seen in q3 fy24 we have coped up with the decline in spreads and increase in credit costs for two consecutive quarter but reported a stronger bottom line as we break even in the gold loan business in q4 fy24 this shall be once again strongly validated now coming to technology and esg our past two years we have been preparing to establish a systematic esg practice internally among the exercise undertaken was preparation of a materiality and gap assessment report with help from a big four consultant we are moving ahead to op- obtain ratings under leading global esg framework our board in the latest meeting approved eight esg related policies in setting up a esg governing f- framework through a dedicated esg department our new board induced inducts also uh, reflect the, our orientation going ahead we shall periodically keep our stakeholder updated on the progress we make on esg assessment technology has been another critical area for focus for us when there are a number of initiatives in the revamping our lms lms collection technology process engineering and analytics driven decision making have been implemented very soon we shall be announcing launch of our exclusive co lending platform that shall smoothen the co lending process in coming months we shall complete uh, implementation of oracle flex cube lms for our msme business in house applications developed to improve login to disbursal tax shall start delivering us tangible cost saving from fy25 onwards we look forward to regularly sharing qualitative outcomes of our tech initiative in a couple of quarters with that i conclude my remarks and we shall now take questions thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touch tone telephone if you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will now wait for a moment while the question queue assembles The first question is from the line of Hitesh Jain from Avagra Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, my first question is uh, on the gold loan business. I think uh, at what level? I mean, at a branch level, does the branch need to do business in order to break even? And uh, currently, like, how many branches are at that uh, break even level? I mean, I'm assuming a lot of there are a lot of new branches that maybe are uh, which may be incurring losses. So, how many branches are already uh, at peak end level? That's the first question. So, we we start breaking even at the at the currently we have about 747 gold loan dedicated branches which only book the gold loan businesses. And currently, out of uh, that, it three crore rupees uh, per branch. we start breaking even so out of 747 uh, give me a couple of minutes i will i will tell you how many branches are 3 crore and above there are some branches which have even crossed 5 crore rupees so they are they are uh, reasonably good profitable but i just number uh, give me a couple of minutes uh, meanwhile we can take up the another question and then come back to answering your question so so i mean uh, what if a branch doesn't reach 3 crores like how much time do you all hold on to it and decide okay fine let's shut this branch so normally to reach the branch at 3 crore depending on the location to location every branch doesn't have the same formula some branches is 3 crore within 12 months some branches have taken even 15 months and some of the branches have uh, are going to take 18 months to reach that have you all closed any branches So we are not closing any branches. Okay. And what is like the cross-selling opportunities at these branches, the gold loan branches? 
So is all we know there is an increased uh, awareness about the insurance and so every gold loan branch has capability to sell the insurance policy to the our borrowers. Now the customers when they come in, uh, sometimes uh, even gold loan customers, it is very easy to explain them and convince them that they take insurance policy which is take care of their mediclaim and hospitality, hospitality bills. And that policy will cost maybe about 5,000 rupees per year. But we explain them even next 10 years they get admitted by for any reason and with any of their family member even twice. They will be able to afford good treatment at the same time it will turn out to be a, uh, cheaper. So with that connection we, we have started selling insurance policy already. And I think from the year April onwards there is a focus that we should uh, generate about 30 crore rupees a year insurance policy premium income out of which a significant portion of the commission will accrue to us. So it is very easy. So we are targeting our cross sale. Our technology is being already being in house made for that. And um, our this uh, corporate agency license is, is already active now. So you will start seeing the traction. Uh, I think Q4 we should be able to report this specific number on the insurance uh, income earned from each segment, be it gold loan, be it MSME, be it home loan, or be it construction finance. Okay. It is going to be a very sizable income next year onwards. Okay. Sure, so just continuing with this question on the insurance, uh, in your opening remarks, you mentioned that uh, you will touch a ROE of 15% with the help of insurance. Can you just elaborate more on that? Uh, How is that journey going to be? So, uh, if you talk about ROE, let us go step by step. First of all, this year our gold loan loss will be in the range of about 100 crore rupees. Next year, our gold loan vertical will start delivering profit. So, this entire 100 loss will go away and we should turn into positive where we expect anything between uh, 40 to 50 crore rupees of profit contribution for the gold loan next year. So that is a 140 to 150 crore rupees upside from the current financial. Now car loan distribution will continue to grow uh, and that is also going to give a good amount of free income. Uh, if you say the gross revenue from car loan business comes in the range of about 2.3 percent uh, on the uh, volume originated. So this year the gross revenue will be in the range of about 230 crore rupees uh, from the car loan vertical. And next year, this business again should go 20%. Even after all the expenses and the fee uh, commission payment, we should be able to generate about 50 crore rupees of uh, profit from the car loan distribution alone. Insurance side, uh, by putting the dedicated people team and license now in place, we should be able to generate an income of about 40 to 50 crore rupees again from the car, car, car insurance business. So the cross sale is going to uh, give us a free income support from our, our customer base. And next year, we, we expect our number of customers to be in the range of about 800,000. But when can you achieve this 15% uh, which year? I mean, next year? 15% or... ROA we hope to achieve by around between FY26 and FY27. Okay. So this is one last question for my side. So what's, what's the rationale for making the, a separate subsidiary for auto loans? Okay, now I got the data, sorry, I got the data of the gold loan branch out of 747. 313 branches is already cross uh, 3 crore rupees. Okay. Plus 113 branches are already uh, moved. We are making, uh, already started contributing to PNL. Okay, good. Sure, sure. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajat Roy from Investec. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Uh, yes, sir, you are audible. You may proceed, sir. Good afternoon. Um, I, I just wanted to sort of get an understanding on the growth in the gold loan business at about 250% year on year with regard to AUM. Could you please shed some light on one how this growth is achieved as well as forward guidance for what we could expect uh, with regard to specifically gold loans as well as the other business segments? So if we talk about gold loan growth, this year because of the new branches have been added about 298 branches in gold loan alone 
on the back of that it has started we expect to close our gold loan au of this year about 3000 crore and next year we should achieve a gold loan au in the range of about 4700 to 5000 crore rupees so that is what our growth will come so you can say next year gold loan business again will continue to grow in the range of about 50 to 60% if you talk about our msme business which has grown about 24% and uh, our home loan business has grown in the range of about 50% next year if we talk about overall growth we should we are confident to achieve a growth in the range of about 35% plus honest sir so thank you thank you very much thank you ladies and gentlemen if you wish to ask a question you may please press star and 1 the next question is from the line of gorav sharma from hsbc please go ahead uh, hello yeah am i audible yes hello. i got it yeah thanks uh, yeah sir thanks for giving an opportunity so couple of questions sir so a uh, couple of mbfc mentioned during their result that they are slowing down their coal and disbursement in housing finance as they receive some direction for formulas from nhd to maintain certain threshold of uh, home loans in their own book so they are slowing slow, slowing down their uh, coal and disbursement just wanted to know whether you have also received such directions uh, from an hd to slow down uh, coal and disbursement that is question number 1 and second sir uh second on margin outlook like we have seen the 40 bits uh, compression in margin outlook so will you see that further margin going in fy25 and what will be the key drivers for sustain sustainable margin so so we uh, we have not got any direction to slow down coal lending or otherwise uh, the home loan disbursement at all on the contrary now nhb is holding the meeting of all ceos and key management every 6 uh, month and asking them are they facing any difficulty or how they can improve the business how the expansion so i i can clearly see it is the trust of the government it is the trust of the regulator that how the first home buyer can be serviced by making the credit easily available and now affordable housing the, the another plus point is that smaller houses are being is getting built by developer because the people are started getting the loan uh, so we see this segment uh, will continue to grow for next few years and uh, while we are growing at a 50% pace i don't think in next year we will be slowing down this segment so this is one part uh, what was the other question other part of the your question sir on the margin outlook uh, so how can you protect margin going forward and what will be the key drivers So there are two ways to protect the margin. There are three things you will do rather. One is that we have currently got from the six uh, uh, banks a uh, co-lending line. So co-lending line efficient, efficiently, what they do is that 20% money you have to put, 80% they do. We have got about 3,000 crore plus kind of a co co-lending co line. This will give us a ability to service even those customers who otherwise would have said no because the low interest rate so it will help us to uh, control the balance transfer to the competition plus it will give us a additional layer of the customer who would have said no and third the gold loan contribution in overall eu will continue to grow gold loan realized yield in the range of about a targeted yield for the next year in the range of about 18% so the overall our spread will continue to improve fourth our free distribution uh, from the car loan business and insurance business will be additional uh, uh, support to improve the overall our margins oh, understood sir those were my only questions thank you so much for answering thank you the next question is from the line of satya prakash pande from haitong please go ahead hi uh, am i audible uh, yes sir you are audible yeah so my first question is uh, could you please provide further details regarding our plan for insurance business specifically what policies are we intending to launch and what is the current progress regarding the establishment of team and infrastructure for this initiative so we are not going to be our self insurance company we are just partnering with the 
existing life, non-life health insurance companies to distribute their products among our customers and earn uh, the commission out of those cross-sell of cross-selling the insurance business. Okay, okay. Thank you for that answer. If I may ask one more question, uh, just wanted to understand your distribution and network reach in car loan business. Capri's presence across location is actually constant at around 715 since last few quarter and specific reason for not widening the presence. Additionally, I would like to understand how our new subsidiary Capri Loan, Capri platform will integrate into our existing car loan distribution business. So this car loan distribution business, while we have about 700 plus location where our employees are present, we have a DSA network, about 1,800 locations. And I can, uh, with a uh, pride, I can say that right from Jammu to Kanyakumari, we have a network either of DSA or our employee on ground. So there is no place left where if there is car loan business is happening and bank branches are there, uh, we are not there. So we have already deeply penetrated in this, and that is the reason you can see that among the non-car dealer segment, we are uh, the number one, and by far margin we are number one in that segment. This year we close to 10,000 crore rupees distribution, and next year we hope we are we are putting all efforts to grow that business by another 20% next year. Okay, um, thank you so much. Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Darshil Pandya from Fintry Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. So I just wanted to understand uh, the, how will the cost of you know funds evolve in the light of restrictions on bank lending, and what is the you know expected lag between the increase in the cost and the pass through to the customers? So you so recently RBI have also uh, issued the circular where the risk weightage based on the rating have been increased and that the, the bigger increase have happened for the triple A companies and double A companies because flatly their risk weightage have been doubled as far as we are concerned. Our risk weightage have been uh, increased only by five, five basis points. But however, cost of fund have uh, become a costlier as compared to six months ago. However, as far as the new lending is concerned, we are able to pass on that increase uh, our existing portfolio about 45 percent of the customer we are able to pass on the rest we, we have to absorb it so whereby you could have seen that there is a little compression on the spread but since gold loan business is going to increase in overall proportion our spread will uh, improve uh, in the next year plus a lot of efficiency is being coming from our existing branches and our technology initiative, we are about 100 plus people's team in the our in-house technology team along with outside vendors. We are putting up the, our loan origin system, which will be launched in the April. That will bring a lot of uh, efficiency in the cat and thereby improving the productivity. So next year, a lot of things are happening where our gold loan branches are going to turn positive. Since we are not going to do more expansion in the gold loan so that uh, investment losses will uh, stop happening, plus expansion of the and, and the scale up of the insurance distribution business, and all the things we'll see a lot of positive in the uh, FY25. Got it, got it. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal N from MK Global. Please go ahead. Happy afternoon, sir. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, sir, my question is, your MSME contribution as a percentage of your total AUM has come down to, you know, close to 35.7% from 44.5% a year ago. Uh, so are there any intentions to further reduce this contribution? And what are the strategies do, uh, you know, the company has in place for MSME business segment? And additionally, are there any plans to expand SME lending into new geographical areas? So since we launched the gold loan new product and gold loan is increasing also, the overall AUM and percentage, the overall AUM and also 
contribution will come down however uh, our uh, nsme business as you see it has also grown about 24% we are evaluating uh, to utilize our existing branch network uh, to launch the micro lab which means the secured lending in the segment where ticket size is less than 7 and 1/2 lakh rupees is under evaluation uh, once we uh, decide which are branches how to launch then we set up the team but that is in the active consideration so that is where the expansion will happen as far as the new geography in msm is concerned at the moment we are not thinking next quarter which is the first quarter of fy25 will will draw a plan but that is only at the at the consideration is still we are not frozen yet however if overall msm is going to be a key contributor because their uh, tenure of the loan is 15 years and that is a the loan which is a longer uh, horizon of the income so the run down doesn't happen the way run down happen in the uh, gold loan so every uh, so there is a balance happening by msme every customer life uh, despite tenure is 5 years so i think that will continue to show a, a decent growth got it thank you so much sir uh, just one more question uh, so after adjusting the gold loan vertical the cost to income ratio remains slightly elevated at over 50% what do you anticipate this like when do you anticipate this to moderate and what would be a uh, like a sustainable level uh, in the near future so i think we we should have a uh, excluding gold loan our cost to income ratio should come down in the range about 45% okay and by when are you expecting this to happen and then if we expect the next year because of the various initiative plus technology i think it should come down to the next year itself you will yeah. see the traction in the first quarter of fy25 itself okay okay sir and this 45% would be a sustainable level right i think we are hoping that once the technology phase 1 comes then another phase 2 will come in another 6 months time and then we see a clearly uh, our profitability level is improving from the same manpower so uh, i don't want to give a number but we are working uh, towards to bring it down in the range of 40% 40 okay sir thank you so much sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of tanish kumakwana from ilara please go ahead hello sir good afternoon thank you for the opportunity uh, sorry to interrupt sir but your line is not very audible i request you to please use the handset and speak closer to the mic can you hear me now yes this is much better sir please go ahead uh, yes thank you So for the opportunity, a very good afternoon. So I would like to know what is the reaction rate for this quarter in our loans compared to FY23, and what would be you know a credit top up for the same? I can you please repeat? We are not able to hear clearly. So what would be the reaction ratio for the quarter as compared to FY23? and how are we you know evolving in the filtering process how are we you know like what are the what is the basically on what basis are we accepting the consumer or rejecting it and also what will be the loan top up amount to these you know existing customers so you are asking for the which segment uh sir all <clears throat> like a blended on a whole level basis so you can you know uh, give us segment wise as well that would be very helpful if we talk about our msme no home loan login to the investment ratio is in the range of about 30% uh login to sanction ratio in the range of 40 but disbursement uh, ratio is 30% and uh, in uh, gold loan there is no login and disbursement because on the spot we decide whether to do it or not do it whether the customer is expect accepting or whether we are rejecting the customer so that happens on the spot itself 
So there is no login and all that ratio. Uh, no, no, so I wanted to know the conversion ratio, like if 100 consumers are there, like what is the rejection ratio, not login, rejection. Like how many do you reject and how many do you accept on the basis of what are you like, do you accept the civil or 700 or 750 or on the lines of that? So if you are saying 30%, then 70 or 60% you can say rejection ratio. Because forty percent get sanctioned, sixty percent get rejected. Okay. Hello. Does that answer your question? And uh, who are your key goal lending partners for gold loan, mortgages, and SMEs? So for the gold loan, mortgage, and SME are Yes Bank, State Bank of India, Union Bank of India, Punjab and Sindh Bank, Yuko Bank, and uh, Indian Overseas Bank. Okay, sir. And uh, sir, RBI has uh, recently, you know, shown some uneasiness in you know digital lending and. Uh, they have also shown some concerns in co-lending space. So do you see any regulatory action on this front? So, uh, I don't think co-lending side RBI have any concern because they are, they are the RBI and, and banks are more keen to increase this volume for the purpose of making customers' uh, uh, cost of fund going down. That is their sole objective. So, we are, we are seeing more and more line coming to us from the co-lending partners. Uh, as compared to last year, I think we have at least five, five to six times more co-lending sanction by this by this year. So uh, we think co-lending is going to be the very uh, acceptable and growing feature uh, between the banks and MBFC partnerships. Okay, got it, sir. Thank you so much. That's really helpful. Thank you. We have no further questions, ladies and gentlemen. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Yeah, so thank you. So if you have seen, uh, all of you would have noticed that AJ uh, organization and the management, we have shown our ability to build the new businesses. In last three years, we have uh, started Gold Loan. We have built the... Uh, car loan distribution platform. Now we have launched this insurance a platform based on the technology. And uh, so we have shown as an organization successfully doing that. And I think gold loan business in the shortest span of time, we have uh, activated 747 branches. Now we are thinking about the micro lab, which, which is the same kind of a customer of a smaller ticket size to leverage our branch network. So going forward, <coughs> cross sell and utilizing our uh, existing customer base to reduce the cost income ratio and to improve the margins will be the focus and we hope with the technology uh, focus which has increased our cost to income ratio significantly because we are spending a lot of money on the technology side will come down in the next year but the effort of the technology will be seen in the next year so we are quite excited that FI25 hold a lot of hopes and a lot of good things which are translating into the better income and earnings. With that, I conclude my uh, 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 speech and uh, address. Thank you so much. Thank you. On behalf of Go India Advisors, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.